Mr. Chairman, the meeting is yours. Okay, thank you and welcome to everybody to our April 20th meeting of the Alcastan Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting is being taped and it's also being on YouTube, so be careful what you say. Uh, we have uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes of March of 2021. And when you make a motion, kindly identify who you are to make it easier for us to- uh, Excuse me, Mr. Chair, can we do the roll call? Yeah, let's do the minutes and then we'll do the roll call. Okay. Your pleasure regarding the minutes. Uh, this is Ruth Ann Omer. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 2020 for the Office and Advisory Committee. 2021. 2021, sorry. Second. We have a motion and second question. All in favor of your consent by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Ayes have it. Let's go ahead with the um, roll call. Good afternoon. Nick Bianchi. Lisa Werder Brown. Present. Cindy Casey. Present. Darla Cravada. Present. Lloyd Cunningham. Here. Dan DeMarco. Patricia DeMarco. Present. Tina Doucet. Ariam Ford Graver. Nick Greesock. Here. Mark Heckman. Rebecca Kernan. Here. <clears throat> Ken Lasota. Ken Lasota here. Ruth Ann Omer. Here. Stanley Paps. Will Pickering. Here. Mary Ellen Ramage. Here. Tim Rogers. Here. Mark Samponia. Here. Kathy Sapp. Present. Danielle Ventresca. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is an update on federal funding for water and sewer projects. Uh, Jeannie? Well, things are. Things are moving very rapidly and it's uh, kind of hard to uh, sometimes get a handle on everything. Uh, we just received information that this week there are going to be um, a number of water and sewer um, projects considered by the by the Senate and one of the Senate committees. Um, I had incorporated, I had sent everybody the information that we had in terms of what had come out of uh, the first big um, uh, in the, uh, money that had come out through the feds. Um, and it, on the spreadsheet, you can find out the approximate amount you will be receiving. You should receive half fairly shortly, the other half a year later. Uh, there are four major places you can use that money, one of which is water and sewer. Um, and um, we pushed pretty hard for that to make sure that municipalities could take advantage of it um, if they chose to. Um, it's kind of getting difficult because you need to have a scorecard to keep track of everything that's going on. The infrastructure, overall infrastructure package that's being discussed is probably going to be initially moved piecemeal. Um, and that's part of what is being discussed this week. Um, you've got Senate committees and House committees moving uh, on different levels. And so it's hard to tell you exactly how any of this is going to end up. But please feel free to contact me. I will always give you I will always be able to give you the, the data that I have, um, but recognize that like all data, it's a snapshot in time. The reality is we could very easily have um, the for the first time a decent amount of money for our municipalities as well as Alcasan from the federal government to take care of uh, our 
old infrastructure. Uh, and that's very good news. Um, so if uh, I'd be happy to go over this in more depth, but the reality is I did send you that information out, which was the, the most up to date we could find. Uh, it was part of the Municipal Connections newsletter and I'll continue to update you and update the municipalities as things get um, more concrete. I am working with uh, other organizations and our lobbyists to make sure that both Alcasan and our, our uh, communities are in the mix for any money that might come down. And our goal along with most of the greater Pittsburgh community is to get more than our fair share this year, since in the past we haven't. Um, so I'm sorry, that's kind of broad brush, but if you want more details, I'll be happy to, to talk to you at length or send your emails, however you wish. Jeannie, I think one of the questions that all of us have, and I don't know if anything's been decided yet, is whether this is gonna uh, include uh, water, uh, storm water as a sewer uh, for funding. Yeah, uh, the different committees handle drinking water that handle waste sewer and wastewater. We are making sure that we are fully in, thanks to our local um, members of Congress, fully in the, the committees like transportation that uh, take that fund wastewater um, and stormwater. Uh, it will be, however, um, in some cases, what I'm seeing coming out is money to go through EPA for new approaches. I don't quite know what that means. That just started to surface this week. Uh, and um, in some cases, <clears throat> so you have to recognize that drinking water comes a different way than the wastewater. So if you're a PWSA, you get to do both. Uh, uh, if you're strictly a, a drinking water um, authority, then you have to follow the, the drinking water, which I think comes through energy. It's different in the Senate from the House also. So Tim, if you wanna talk about drinking water and sewer, I'll be happy to sit down with you because I know you're also, you're still chair, right, of Hampton? Chair yeah, of water. And, and what we're looking for, I think also is whether it's storm water. Yeah. We're an SSO community only. And there's a number of us here that are combined number of us are SSO. And yeah. an SSO community spend money on storm water. Well, there, there, I could pretty much guarantee that there's gonna be something in there for storm water. Um, it, that is possibly gonna be where they're looking for new approaches. Okay. But again, Tim, I'll send you what I, what I received this week. Okay, but great. recognizing we're just at the beginning of the process. What we're looking at today is not what we're going to end up with. Good, thanks. Any other questions for Jeannie? Apparently over the soldier, somebody's cleaning my window behind me. So. No other questions. The next thing will be uh, an update on regional conveyance and regionalization. Jan? Jan, you're muted. Muting me. I have a screen to share. Okay. Wait a second. Screen. Okay. Um, these are just a couple things that um, the Regional Conveyance Division does, um, some of them fairly routinely. And I uh, just thought we'd give you an update on some of those activities. So uh, these are on Alcasan owned facilities. So we do cleaning and inspection and we have annual cleaning contracts. They do usually last two years uh, into to fulfill the contract. Um, we're currently doing charters, the Charters Creek Interceptor this current contract is like 20,165 feet, but there were two prior contracts that did the upper portions of it. We're now down at the lower portions of Chartiers Creek, so the pipe gets larger. 
and we do know the hot spots you know where streams were connected or where manholes have a habit of blowing um, that run along stream channels so we do go out and inspect them routinely to see what type of cleaning that they need oh. <laughs> i was just told i'm not doing the presentation That working? Mm. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. I can yes, see yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Good. Yes. Thank you. You just need to click from the current slide. Up. Okay. So, um, we also do lining. Um, so did the, is the CIPP lining slide up? Yes. Okay, good. So we do uh, lining, you know, cured in place, pipe lining. Um, we do this routinely. We've done approximately seven miles of sawmill run, the sawmill run interceptor. It was also done under three contracts. Uh, that's about a hundred year old interceptor. So that was the reason behind uh, lining it. Uh, we are in the section, uh, this current contract is from Bowsman down to the West End and that will complete the lining of sawmill. This is the larger portion or the larger diameter as well. So 42 to 48 inch diameter pipe. Uh, we're also lining about a mile of uh, the Monongahela interceptor, this portion is what we refer to as subaqueous interceptor. So it actually runs in the uh, Monongahela River. So we, um, back in 2018, if you'll look at the top uh, corner um, photograph, you'll see the river with some bubbling in it. One of our employees noticed that bubble and with further investigation, we found out that the interceptor had um, a puncture. So we had to do lining in that section under an emergency contract. And lining, you know, uh, requires bypass pumping and um, work to be per performed at night. So uh, we are being proactive this time and we're going to line about a mile of this interceptor and put in four access ports so that we can inspect it. So these are um, these are some of the contracts. A lot of them do have to be, at least certainly along this interceptor, the work is performed um, on a barge. We have- And, and what's the diameter of that? This one is a 30 inch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, we have flap gates. So the flap gates uh, keep the river out. And then they, um, it's a hinged gate that opens up and uh, releases excess flows causing the overflows. So um, we have to replace them, make sure that they're sealed and so we have replaced approximately 30 over the last 10 years. You know, they range anywhere from uh, the largest one we've done to date is uh, was nine by nine foot gate. And um, then, then we have them all the way down to like just a two foot gate. Uh, sometimes we use the duck bills and uh, certainly not on the larger ones, but on the uh, smaller ones we do. Uh, some of the outfalls are submerged, and so they require a uh, coffer dam so that the work can be performed. Um, that's what you're seeing in the top left photo. Um, the uh, top right photo is that uh, nine by nine foot gate. And then the um, duck bill, of course, is the bottom left. And the gentleman in the um, hole that they're working on the uh, installation. So that's the hinge 
um, that opens and allows the gate to open when it um, exceeds the uh, elevation of the, you know, it, it creates a, a, a level where it opens and discharges. And their work is being performed within a coffer dam. So, but these submerged gates do sometimes have to be performed from a barge as well. This was a Tassie Hollow Grit Basin. So Tassie Hollow is a, a stream channel uh, into the sewer system. So um, the top left shows where we're, uh, we demolished the existing pipe and they put in a carrier pipe in the photo to the right. And then the bottom left photo shows the uh, roadway restored with the um, grit basin in operation. And approximately 107 tons of uh, sediment were removed from that grit basin uh, last year. Jan, Jan, where does all that sediment go? We have vector trucks that go out and take the debris and bring it to the plant for proper disposal. So we have this one here and we also have one that we've kind of um, taken on from uh, in the Delafield Avenue area. It was constructed by the county, but we are inspecting it. Uh, the county did improve the access to it with a Bilco. They replaced the existing access with a Bilco gate and made it easier for us to uh, do the inspection. And we're inspecting that one and um, cleaning that out as well. The stream removal project. So this was Pine Hollow. This I think was actually uh, resulted in the largest removal of excess flow, clean stream water flow from the sewer system. It was done under a partnership with the Army Corps of Engineers and Gene was just talking about funding. And this project was one when they had, uh, I forget what the um, purpose was, but President Obama had some pot of money that was being um, funneled out to communities to support, you know, stimulating the economy and this project was shovel ready. So we partnered with the Army Corps of Engineers and got five and a half million dollars uh, towards its construction. So this is estimated that it takes a uh, hundred million gallons of storm water annually from the sewer system. And it was the construction of a 60 inch nearly mile long pipe through a very narrow channel as you can see from the bottom left and uh, that's the roadway restored after the work was complete. But you can see the amount of flow to the right that was removed from the sewer system. This project here is Squaw Run, uh, force main replacement. This was done in 2018. So the existing force main was along the roadway and it was being impacted by um, there was a barrier and it kept getting punctured. It was pretty shallow line. So we replaced nearly half a mile of forest main and lined it, relocated it to the railroad property. And we have um, improved access <clears throat> and uh, we're out of the busy intersection and off the roadway location. And that's it. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Jan, this is Lisa. Um, you mentioned that you were doing relining from Bowsman to the West End. I was down in Ansonia Place about two weeks ago, and there were crews down there. Are you guys doing something there as well? Was it where did they help us on vehicles or? They look like they look like independent contractors. There weren't going to be on two meetings. The, the contractor uh, for this recent contract hasn't mobilized yet. Okay. Right now we're getting um, shop drawing submittals. 
Okay. So not in the field yet. So, but, um, you know, if you can get a name of a truck, I could find out if it's, uh, uh, we did do um, the siphon planing. Now that was that's further done. Okay. We, um, did, uh, we, had, we had a tire stuck in our uh, sawmill run siphon. So we uh, got that out. Okay. All right. Thanks. I, I was just curious because they had, there were crews down there. I don't know whether they were with PWSA or, you know, contract with PWSA or with you guys. And Jan, um, very informative presentation. Um, can we get a copy of that to share with our municipalities that we represent? I, I mean, it, sure, sure. I, um, yeah, I throw it together. It's not Alka Sands typical pretty <laughs> no, but it, it, it shows all the really great work that Alka San is doing on the regional sewers. And I think that's important to get that out, that it's all over the place and what's happening. And then if they have individual questions, I can get back. But uh, no, I think it was great. If I, if I could get a copy of my charters group or whoever, I'd appreciate it. Sure. And I mean, it doesn't even, um, there were projects that were performed by others that we had a uh, involvement in the design where we eliminated nine CSOs. I mean, there's things like that. There's um, close to 200 manholes that have been raised. So, I mean, there's a um, enormous amount of improvements that are happening uh, to our own system also. Okay. No, it's just good information, uh, even as is, and we can keep adding each month. So thank you. Sure, no problem. Okay, Ruth Ann, we will, not to make it pretty, but we will repackage it only because not everybody is through then and can speak to it like Jan can. And we want to make sure it has context. So we will read it and get it out to everybody. Okay, thank you. I thought it was perfect. I got it all, but that's okay. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions for Jan? That was an impressive presentation. Thanks, Jan. Okay. Next item is update on clean water by Kim Kennedy and Michelle Byers. Kim? Hey, thank you. Let me try and figure out where to share my screen. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Mm -hmm. So we've had some really uh, some great news since March. Um, the last at the last meeting. So Michelle and I are going to give an update. So this is a slide that I actually presented to the group last October that sort of gives you some context of why we were doing some of the things we were doing with the preliminary planner. And this is because it's actually pulled directly from the modified consent decree in Appendix Z. So we, um, in 2017, we procured the preliminary planner. That was the team that took the um, everything outside of the fence to about a 20% design phase. And ultimately the end of their contract was the uh, finalization of the basis of design report. So last fall, um, we submitted two reports, the basis of design report, which was um, from the preliminary planning team. And then from that, which was a 10,000 page report, um, very, very big, all of the um, geotechnical information and a really detailed analysis that was part of the preliminary planning process. But then within that, we pulled out the proposed revisions, the six proposed revisions that we had talked about last year and then again in the public meeting. And we formally submitted the um, interim, the proposed revisions to the interim measures. And that went in about six weeks later in November. And then per the CD, the agencies had six months to review both of these, well, yeah, to review both of these documents. And very quickly, the revisions. So I just wanted to remind everybody what the revisions were. There were six of them. The first one was the revision of the um, extent. Oops, so, sorry. Um, 
So we lengthened the Ohio River Tunnel. We eliminated the um, retention treatment basin and extended the Mon River Tunnel down to about Sandcastle, which is where the RTB was um, proposed. And uh, then we shortened the ART just by virtue of extending the Ohio River Tunnel. So that was one and two. The one was the um, tunnel alignment changes and two was re uh, eliminating the retention treatment basin and extending the Mon Tunnel. So the third one was some schedule impacts associated with those changes. So the ORT will be finished a little bit later because it got longer, right? And then the ART will be finished a little bit earlier because it got shorter. The tunnel pump station, which is located here at the treatment plant, will be finished later because it is it can't go online prior to the Ohio River Tunnel going online. So those two dates just are married together no matter what. And then there was no change for the Mon River Tunnel dates, and then overall, we're still going to meet the compliance in the 2036 date, which was part of the original um, modified consent decree. So this is just a snapshot of the preliminary schedule where it stands right now. Currently, we have the uh, request for qualifications out for the Ohio River Tunnel. So we will be starting design this year, but it will be fourth quarter by the time we um, receive quals and shortlist and get proposals and award the contract. So late 2021, we'll start the design and we would anticipate construction starting in 2025. And then you see the dates as they follow for the Allegheny and the Mon. Um, and then you can also kind of see that there is some overlap between the segments. So um, there's a lot of work to be done and uh, you know, I guess it depends on who's looking at it. I think it's a short amount of time, but um, I guess it depends on how you look at it. So the fourth revision out of six, the fourth out of six was we just optimized some of the control measures for select outfalls. And this, got into, this, this went into pretty specific details of certain outfalls, but we updated the modeling. A lot, of, a lot of information, especially from our municipal customers had come in. We were able to um, we just keep improving the information and the modeling. So we assessed um, some cost effective means to achieve the same or better, right? It's always either the same or better performance. Um, eliminated some drop shafts because we were able to, they were smaller overflows that were able to be taken care of by the plant expansion. And then we added some drop shafts um, so we could actually pick up a couple additional ones with some cost savings, always kind of staying within our affordability threshold. And then the fifth one, the fifth ask to the agencies was to um, eliminate a new pump station because with the additional modeling, we were able to be able to take care of that with gravity. And you always want to take care of something with gravity if the opportunity presents itself. And then this is the last one. This was our last ask, and this was about the cross connections. So we um, eliminated most of the cross connections. They turned out to be incredibly expensive and um, didn't really provide uh, a lot of value and um, the agencies agreed. So with that, I will actually turn it over to Michelle to kind of walk through the steps that we have been going through um, to, to today. Michelle. Hey, thanks, Kim. Um, it's a little bit small on the screen, but I'm going to briefly just go through a timeline um, of what it took to get these two big plans approved, as Kim described. They were um, the preliminary basis of design report was a was a very large plan that was during the co you know, well, still in the COVID time where you know DEP wasn't in their offices, so just getting that plan to them took took a bit of an effort. But um, I'll walk through this timeline and just to share with you uh, the efforts that were put into having that approval. Um, so in January, on June 26, the, um, we met with the agencies for preliminary discussions before the reports were submitted. And that was before the public meetings also. 
October 1st, 2020, the basis of a design report was submitted. November 12th, the interim wet weather plan was submitted. Um, and November 30th, um, Elkison received the first set of questions for sections two and three of the uh, preliminary basis of design report. December 10th, um, we Elkison met with the agencies and responded to those questions and we had some follow-ups. Um, January 28th, 2021, Elkison received the second set of questions on sections five through 16 of the preliminary basis of design report. February 10th and 11th, we received the third set of questions, um, which were the, on the revisions to the IWWP. February 17th, we met with the agencies again to provide our responses and answer questions and have follow-up discussions. And then March 30th of 2021, um, the EPA, PADP, and ACHD approved the preliminary basis of design report and the revised interim wet weather plan, such that it met the requirements of the consent decree. And then on April 14th, 2021, the US EPA, DEP, and ACHD, and Alcasan filed a joint status report to the courts for informational purposes only, noting the revisions and the approved reports. Um, and so in summary, the um, EPA, PADP, and ACHD submitted approximately 180 technical questions, which Alcasan provided technical responses. There were three series of technical meetings with the agencies totaling over six plus hours of technical discussions. The time from the submission of the reports to the agency approval was six months, which was exactly what they committed to us. Um, in the conclusion, um, on March 30th, Elkisan received a letter from EPA indicating that the agencies approved the preliminary basis of a design report and the revised interim wet weather plan. And the approval is an indication that the submittals met the requirements of the modified consent decree. When the joint status report was filed in the U.S. District Court of, for Western PA, it included this following statement, which I think is um, uh, good to, for me to read if you can bear with me. So, um, so the statement followed, uh, following the review of the EPA, PADEP, and ACHD, the agencies concluded that the submittals, which included the proposed revisions to the interim measures contained all of the information required by paragraph 67B of the modified consent decree, including information sufficient to show that the proposed modification of the interim measures will achieve equivalent or better performance than the unmodified interim measures, and that the updated schedule for the revised portions of the interim measures is as expeditious as practicable. And then the appro these approvals, I also want to note, are not permit approvals for construction or construction methods. This will remain Alcasan's responsibility to re obtain all the permits and other governmental approvals as the planning and design continues. So that's all we have. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Any questions from anybody? Well, again, it's, it's Ruth Ann, and uh, can I get a copy of that to send out to my uh, municipalities? Because uh, that has some really great information in it also. Sure. Yeah, sure thing. Again, thank you. The slides don't match, but because <laughs> <laughs> of your slides, Arletta, we'll have to clean, we'll have to quote that with, we'll clean them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank very you. Good, very good presentation. Thank you. Uh, a lot of good stuff this this month. Next discussion is uh, on Three Rivers Wet Weather and the Alka Sand Partnership. We have with us the new executive director of Three Rivers Wet Weather, Dave Monts. Dave? Um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to kind of, uh, this is Jean, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history of our working together. And most of you, many of you know this, I'm not sure everybody knows it, but uh, Three Rivers Wet Weather was created in 1998 to support Alcasan and its municipalities in addressing the wet weather problem. Uh, we, it was founded by Alcasan and the Allegheny County Health Department. And for many years, they had federal funding to do demonstration projects, which is why whenever a Congressman Doyle is asked about helping Alcasan by any reporter, he talks about the Three Rivers <laughs> Wet Weather Demonstration Project. Um, and we're 
hoping that we're going to continue to have him speak uh, favorably about giving us more money. Um, over the years, we've had different executive directors, different staff uh, with uh, Three Rivers Wet Weather, but the one constant has been that they work hand in glove with Alcasan and to help the municipalities and to help us move forward on the clean water plan. So we, I thought we could have here just really, you know, what in what in um, parliamentary procedure you would say the committee of a whole, um, the where we could, if you've got questions about the relationship with Three Rivers Wet Weather, you know, what their scope of work is, things like that. Dave is here to answer questions, as is the Alcasan staff. So I hope you all came with questions. Um, and that's what I, Mr. Chair, that's just kind of the introduction that I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Dave? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's nice to uh, be invited here. I've uh, seen so many familiar faces. Um, as, as Jean said, we discussed about what we would do today, and it's open for your questions, and I'll attempt to answer as best I can. If not, we would get anything back to you. But I will tell you, as you know, um, being a, a former municipal manager, uh, when I decided to make this move to Three Rivers, uh, it was, um, was an easy move because I, I believe in this uh, whole um, – working together on this regionalization of the system. And that's the way we're going to make it really happen. Uh, I started uh, February 1st, as many of you probably know, and uh, it has been a real pleasure working with the Alkistan staff and J Jan's team. They have been so supportive and uh, so helpful in helping uh, me understand the system and reassuring how we all work together uh, I see my friend Arletta here. I remember when we first had the, the first uh, agreement, how we, uh, we struggled and, and um, we sat down with Arletta and uh, she talked about how we had to do the flow monitoring and how much more uh, feasible it would be if we did it on a regional basis. And uh, Arletta stepped up to the plate and Elkistan, um funded that for all of us. It saved us all money and uh, as a community. And I think it really led to this, what I feel is a great partnership um, between the municipalities and Alcasan. Uh, and I think now that we're getting new sets of orders, uh, there'll be two sets of orders coming out shortly, uh, one for the uh, SSO and one for the CSO communities. Um, the um, Elkisan team has been great in helping us uh, gather the data that we need to uh, provide uh, for the exhibits as to the uh, different flow rates and uh, the different capture rates for the CSO. So we really um, have built a big momentum and we need to keep it forward. I will tell you while the agreements aren't completely finalized yet, they're very close. Uh, and it is really going to take us all working together as we have done in the, in the past 20 years uh, to really make this move, move forward. And uh, Elkisan's commitment uh, to this and to Three Rivers is, is outstanding. Uh, I will tell you as the new executive director, our commitment from Three Rivers is to continue to support municipalities and uh, create this collaboration between the two. And, um, you know, we, we're working on some great projects with Elkisan. We're helping them with the, the GROW grant, a uh, fantastic program. Uh, took advantage of it as a municipal manager. I hope more communities take that. I hope you help get the word out. Uh, regionalization uh, of the uh, trunk lines really need to um, push this with, with your communities. It is, it is a great step forward that will allow municipalities to focus more on the internal part of their systems and allow Alcasan to do what they do great, and that's the regional part. Uh, so we really have a long way to go. We are going to be working on a lot more committees. I heard very early on, uh, within the first week of my uh, 
start here that uh, we uh, need to um, look at the two systems different. And I understand that They're, the CSO and SSO are so different that we need to break out committees that were focused on those, those issues. And so we are, we are breaking that out. We are here to uh, support you, facilitate your communities uh, with the help of Elkisan with us. We'll, we'll really make this happen. And I will tell you in the agreements that are about to come out, it is going to take cooperation from community to community. And um, we've proven it, as I said early on, Arletta stepped up to the plate and showed us that regionalization works. So let's just all work towards that and work together and we will make this all really happen for the region. And that's, that's my introduction and I'll, I'll be glad to answer any questions that, that you have. Hey Dave, how is Three Rivers currently funded and is that funding now sustainable? We are we're funded by Alcasan. They have uh, created a funding system for us uh, and um, they have been very uh, generous with us. And uh, so we, um, that, that is our funding source at this point. Is that your sole funding source? Yes. Okay. I think all of us as municipalities have found a great deal of uh, assistance and value in Three Rivers Road weather. Uh, we're past the demonstration projects now, but uh, you've done a lot of good work. And one thing that Dave mentions that I, want to support is that a lot of this will be regional. There, there was a real benefit to having Three Rivers do the uh, flow monitoring years ago. And I think there's a benefit. The benefit is, other than all of us doing separate flow monitoring, to have a regional flow monitoring. But the other benefit is that you're having third-party flow monitoring. And I think that's important when you're dealing with the regulators. If you're not flow monitoring yourself, it's being done by a third party, and that gives a good deal of credibility to it. So. We appreciate the work that Three Rivers does. Are there any other questions for Dave? We appreciate the support. We, we appreciate Alcasan stepping up and, and uh, continuing our funding. Uh, you know, we, uh, we're committed to the purpose. Alcasan's committed to it. And uh, I, I hope we have a longstanding relationship. Uh, I think that um, most of you know me. Uh, you know my, my commitment to this. Uh, I, could have just, I could have just retired. But I decided that uh, this was uh, something that I really wanted to, to do. Uh, Mrs. Mons might not agree with that, but um, I thought it was the right thing to do. And it's a great group of people. Uh, I'll be more than glad to uh, speak to, I think one of, the, one of the things I've been looking at, you know, and, and I did some research today and Jeannie you know, hit on it, that you think about 2004, and, and this is, it's been a long time since we've had an a, uh, agreement and an order that's come out. There's a lot of elected officials that haven't seen an order that is going to require certain things be done by certain dates. There's a lot of changes in this, this field and even municipal managers. So uh, my, my staff, I have them working on, we're gonna create some timelines uh, we're going to create Gantt charts. We're going to give you the visual things that you need to help your boards uh, and your, your basins so that they understand the magnitude of this change. You know, and I sat back the other day and I think that one of the statistics I've asked my staff to look for is we always hear about how much Alcasan spending. It really stepped up to the plate. You, you heard today what they're doing and what Jan described. What we need to also do is tell the region what the municipalities have spent. And where we, we can be lacking a little bit of that. There's millions and millions on top of what Elkistan's doing it. We're not separate, we're really together. We convey it to them to treat for us. I, I know in, in my past experience, I'm glad I didn't own a treatment plan. I'm, I'm glad I was able to send it to Elkistan. I, I wouldn't want all the additional headaches that they have. So. You know, we only have one part of it, but we need to focus on both parts as to what it cost was. And that really shows the impact of, of the system. And I think that um, if I found in my career that what, what Jan showed today 
was really impactful when you think about how much sludge is moved from the system and how they're lining and how this pipe broke under the river. When we get the message out to people, we get the message to our elected officials that it's not just your community or the neighboring communities doing it. We're all doing it together. While people have a problem with paying the rates, we all do. We all, we all write those checks for water bills, electric bills, whatever. But if they if we can show them what they're do, getting for their money, at the end of the day, they're going to be a little bit more or a lot more acceptable to that fact. Elkisan has helped us with funding um, this year to expand our mapping system. Uh, I see ways that we can we can even expand that more to show uh, how much different areas the Grow Grant has done. I can't speak enough about that program. And uh, they've also uh, stepped up to the plate. They're um, re or they funded and, and we're letting out the contract to completely redo the rain gauge system upgrade it, uh, and uh, we're going to be offering some uh, classes on how the engineers can, can use that. We're trying to make it more user-friendly. So Elkison has really stepped up to the plate for my organization to help you as the communities. And I, I want to be here to keep that going. So um, it's really, uh, if you can't tell, I'm excited. And uh I, uh, I look forward to this challenge of these agreements. Uh, they're not going to be easy, but you know, we're, we're Pittsburghers. Uh, we're going to pull together. We're going to go into rooms. We're going to, we're going to work it out and we're going to come out with solutions that make it really work. Hey, so, question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, Mary, if you want to go first, I don't care. I have a couple. So I just uh, have one, one quick one. Will you guys be having meetings with the elected officials like you have in the past on the um, orders? I know I heard in the meetings there'd be meeting there'd be meetings for the solicitors and the engineers, but you know the municipalities are the ones that are signing to these expenses. So I think it would be helpful for them to have deepest understanding possible for what they're signing on yes. to for their residents? Yes, yes, Mary Ellen, that, that is a key factor. You know, we can talk about all this, but we have to convince the elected officials of what's in that agreement, the magnitude. So yes, we will be holding okay. uh, those types of meetings. Thank uh, you. Dave, I might remind you that A-Law is coming up uh, in a couple months. And that yeah. might be an opportunity to present at A-Law. We, we have been in, in contact with them uh, and uh, I am trying to work on that, but uh, I have a grandchild do that day. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to uh, work this, this out, but- uh, Well, there's, so, there's, uh, there's priorities here, so you're gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, Dave, I have a couple of questions. I'm sorry, I have a couple of questions. And I think that everybody here knows um, how much I supported Three Years Wet Weather and um, I was the one that started the engineers working groups and got everybody together and started working and all the good things that have happened. And Dave, I know you a long time and you, nobody knows what he's a great manager and Brewers is lucky to have him and we're lucky to have you do a couple of things and go forward and get this together. Um, just a couple of questions, you know, um, I started a little system of reaching out to my municipalities. And so this is coming from different directions. I would like to say that I would, uh, one of mine was the elected officials meetings um, but not at ALOM. Not everybody's going to go up to ALOM. Everyone has a different opinion about COVID in their life. A lot of things going on there. So please keep that on the list. That was a, a high request to have an elected officials a meeting. You know, the engineers and solicitors are great. Some of them are good at coming back to municipalities. Some are not so great. So that was a high thing of a request. Um, second thing, um, so I think it's public knowledge. Your contract is a million dollars, right, with Alcasan? That's public knowledge in the, in in the that, budget. In that, in that range, yes. I, I don't have the exact figure, but yes. And is there a succession or strategic plan? You guys are doing a lot of great work. Alcasan, great relationship. Different things can happen though. We'd just like to suggest, unless it's not already being done, some sort of succession plan or strategic plan and how you can get other funding in. So if something would happen, you guys can keep going. Is there any discussions about that by the board or anything? Uh, Yes, Ruth. As again, I only started here February first, and my my. Uh, what you don't have it done yet, Dave? Right. The um, 
the, the commitment I made from the beginning was knowing that Alcasan had our funding secured for this year was I'm really committed to the first thing we need to get done is we need to get the orders uh, fit, finalized and out to the communities to be approved so we can start this process. We can't leave it just sit around. We've been it's been sitting around for for too long and we, we need to move that forward. Yes, I am going to look at how we can uh, be, be sustainable in, in our future. And, um, you know, and so, yes, we are looking at that. And, and go back to your first question, ALOM is not the only place that, that I think we need to get the message across. You know, my plan is that I would attend any, any public meeting. If, if a community wants me, I'll be at their public meeting. I will, I will speak at their meeting. I will speak to the elected officials of the group. Um, and, you know, th this, is, this is a commitment to a lot of funds from a municipality. So um, even if we just talk to the elected officials, there's already a small group that come. I will offer that. I will come to any meeting that anybody wants to speak that uh, on how the order is, is put together and how Alcasan and us have, have formulated this partnership to make sure that we move forward. Okay, and again, some of these are suggestions, not even questions, just so that you're aware of them. Um, I know you have a great website. Um, is there some cheat sheet um, that lists um, all the things, the good things that Three Rivers has done or is doing? Like example, you know, it's short, but you know, you have the rate schedule study. You know, you're talking about the implementation chart. You know, you're talking about the classes. Is there some place that's really brief and um, and concise, like a one page or anything, or is that really strictly go to your website to get all that information, or is it posted somewhere? No, we are we are working on that. I um I have um the belief that too many times people say, well, go to our website. I, I don't want that just to go to our website. I want it to be so that when you go, you can get information. You know, at the last, um, one of the last three WG meetings, I, I think we call that, my staff still makes fun of me because I don't know the, the acronyms we use, but um, I've committed to- That's a good to, thing, Dave. Okay, is that right? <laughs> the, uh, we're, we're going to uh, come up with a system that says, and I was actually working with our staff this morning is, do you know? Do you know that the, that the, the uh, website will do this? Do you know that the rainfall uh, gauge will do that? Uh, do you know that you, there's a lot of tools that we can use on there as um, the flush it thing? You know, the more we educate the public, the more we educate the elected officials, the easier it is to get the process going. But yes, um, we need to make it more friendly. I agree with that. And El yeah, San has provided funding for us to upgrade our web page this year. That would be great because you guys do a lot of good things and some that people, because you know, elected officials change over, um, you know, all the time. The engineers and uh, solicitors seem to stay around, but they are the ultimate bosses. To get that sort of cheat sheet so that people know the good things, because the common question is, what does Three Rivers do? Oh my God, they're getting so much money from Alcasan. How do they do this? How much staff do they have? Like, that's even a basic question that, you know, I have to go to your website because I, I didn't know. How many staff do you have right now? Myself and three others. Yeah. So, I mean, I just want to share, like, um, if we can get, you can get that kind of information out, um, that will be really helpful. And then in the programs that you're currently working on, like you were integrally involved with the agreements. Um, you did mention, and I don't know if it's it is on the agenda or not. We are close getting the regionalization agreement signed. What is really left? Who's, you know, is there a problem that we can help with or just getting people to sign them? Or is that a more question for Alpha Sand versus you, Dave? Um, I think when uh, the the agreement the the consent order and agreements was was was, was is with Three Rivers and um, Alcasan has provided us technical support. They are the CSO from what DEP tells us is fa finalized. They are getting all the drafts put together and back to us. The CSO is one that we hope to have the final uh, draft back from Alcasan, I mean, I'm sorry, DEP this week. And um, the goal is to, uh, that we, those would be rolled out the, the month of May. Uh, as to the regionalization, that's, that's a different program that comes from Alcasan and we are there committed to help them 
with uh, individuals understanding that program. And that program is, uh, uh, Alcasan staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's anything that's multi-municipal 10 inches or larger uh, is, is uh, up for uh, transfer uh, possibilities to, uh, to Alcasan. Uh, and it would, it would really help, help everybody, I think. And let me let me respond to that because I, I was supposed to cover that, but I guess I got so excited with my photos I forgot. <laughs> but um, uh, they tell me by the by the end of this month, all of the point of connection agreement transfer agreements will be out to the municipalities. They are getting some requests for the defect reports, so they are um, distrib redistributing um, flash drives with the. Uh, defect report information on them, not not the hard copies. Uh, we do have some municipalities, I think a handful of municipalities that have had their councils pass the um, resolution to sign the transfer agreements. And um, Ken, do you know what percentage that is? Is it like 10% you've seen so far or 15 or 20 or 75? Seven, seen, seen on what, Ruthann? Sign, passing the resolution for adoption. Uh, well, I said I think it was only a handful that I know of, that I know of. So, you know, there Ruth were- um, Ruthann, some municipalities are likely to have more than one transfer agreement right. if they have, you know, multiple connections. Yeah, some have three basins in them, so- um, right. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I'm trying to get after mine. So uh, it's just a very, see right now, very few have signed them is what you're saying. Yes. I mean, I think the defects are still, the uh, repairs are still being made to the defects. And I think the documentation of those defects and providing it to Alcan in the format that we need, that that's still occurring. And uh, then there's the permit, the DEP permit transfer uh, portion that has to occur with it. So I, you know, it's it's a complicated matter, but I think there is movement. Well, there should be um, no excuses at this point, considering all the money they're receiving from the federal government that they can spend on the sewers. So that should eliminate any of that discussion that I get pushed back on about That's money because we're all on the go. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so Dave, um, again, um, I think the biggest thing I heard, and I don't want to, I'm taking up way too much time here, is that I don't think people, you don't celebrate your successes enough. I know you just started in February 1st, in my opinion, because what people don't know what Three Rivers does. They don't know the good things that you're working on, the committees you're involved with. So that cheat sheet that can go somewhere quickly and you tout it everywhere, I think would be really helpful for support um, to know what's going on. And then, you know, certain, you know, we all can have it as our basin reps and get out there for you. You know what I mean? So we can answer questions um, and say, no, that's not true. This is what they're doing. And then one final thing on that rain gauge. Wow, if you could do a simple little class um, cheat sheet for, and don't take this wrong, managers, because <laughs> there's rain gauges on a lot of municipalities and a lot of places and these big storms happen. And why should they have to call their engineers? I used to try and teach my managers like, okay, wait a minute, just go on here and look to answer some questions. So I just throw that out there as something that could really be a nice tool. What is a rain gauge, how to use it, you know, and that kind of stuff. So as a suggestion, but I'm gonna stop for now because I've said enough. So thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask one thing. Do you think it would be possible, Dave? Because I was thinking um, like to have some type of executive summary or a cheat sheet for the agreements, because you know, there's a lot of council people that are brand new, some that kind of know the history of the SOAR system, but some that, you know, just just like kind of, um, you know, maybe time frames and targets, you'll have to do this, this, you know, because you'll get some of them that reading all of that might just be really difficult to understand if you're just fairly new to all this. And so many have changed hands, you know, changed. Yeah, yes, uh, Mary Ellen, we're working on a sheet that'll will break down the uh, agreement that focuses on the time dates. We also uh, have a couple visuals that we're working on that'll be like um, Gantt charts, a flow chart, some of the, yeah. they don't know, so that we can see these periods that people have to follow through. And um, 
so yes, we are we are working on it. So somebody doesn't have to read through all the whereases and and, and everything to that point. Focus in on exactly what it is. So uh, we have a we have some drafts, but it's still a moving target because we don't have the final agreements. Sure. We can't plug everything in. Thank and you. Ruth Ann, it's it's interesting you said about the the um, easy uh, to do and our discussions with Elka saying we have monthly. Uh, we have meetings every two weeks with with their team as to where we're at with our scope of work. And one of the things we really discussed is the uh, user friendly aspect of everything. And and I know as a, as a former manager, I, I would say, like, what, what was that rainstorm the other day? What would that um, how many inches was that? And I and instead of me asking the engineer, we want to do it. So, yes, I could do it. The general public can do it because. You know, you need to get a visual concept. If you do have a, an overflow in your community, if you see it, okay, well, it didn't happen during this storm. How many inches of rain was it? And versus I saw it overflowing this day. So you can get a relative idea of what the impact is. All great suggestions. And one more quick, um, years ago, I did an acronym list for John Schombert. You should dig that up and update it and put that on your website. I'm not kidding, because as new people come on board, go to Three Rivers website. They have a great acronym that explains what, don't laugh, what's an SSO and what's a CSO? And oh my God, Jan's talking about interceptors and collectors and what is that? So just another you know, quick suggestion. I, if you run out of things to do, just call me, Dave. Well, one, <laughs> one thing I've always known in my career, the, the problem with yourself and Mary Ellen, you're too bashful. If we can, if we can get over that part. Well, now that I'm retired, I'm working on that. You know, I have nothing to do, Dave. <laughs> and I'll find have, you some things to do. <laughs> uh, people are also uh, putting in the chat some of their... Um, issues talking about it. Uh, Patty DeMarco from um, Forest Hill said she thanks you for recognizing the municipalities pay for this service and that it's critical for all the parks to work together. Mark Samponia says that Green Tree Borough has spent over four million dollars on COA compliance activities since the beginning. Mary Ellen of Edna said Edna as well including a half million dollar in a pen best loan. So these, these costs really do add up. Um, and then uh, uh, Patty, uh, Patty DeMarco again said they've got a list of defects they've got to work on and they're hoping the federal relief funds will cover that. Um, and uh, I received a text that about 10% have passed a resolution authorizing signatures to the transfer agreement. So I was able to pull that out. Um, Dave, one of the questions that people bring to me is um, stormwater. And because Elkasan, our entire role is to try to reduce it by through our grow program and to treat it when it comes to us, but not to create stormwater authorities, et cetera. So talk about, if you can, what proves what weather does, if anything, about stormwater other than in the system? Well, right at this point, we really don't have much that we do outside of the removal of stormwater from your system. Uh, I have uh, had some meetings with some foundations already and looking at is there programs that the funding that we can get to help municipalities on that end of the um, on, on the stormwater and so I can find a funding source to help us uh, guide municipalities through a lot of the stormwater aspects which are you know the MS4s and, and all that kind of thing so we are working on that type of a, a separate uh, funding source that we can we can do that uh, right now our, our real focus on stormwater is removing the stormwater uh, from the, the system to to do that, uh, the I and I and everything else. Uh, so that that's where we're at with stormwater. And just to circle back a little bit with Jan's team, we we are working with uh, several of the basins and several joint communities where we have um, a memorandum of understanding where we are working on. I guess I would say it's like a dual project. Uh, they're looking at 
the grow funding to help I and I get out of it, uh, of the system. And at the same time, will help uh, during the transfer of one of the municipalities. While grow funding won't fix the defects in the um, this multi-municipal uh, line, the interceptors and tenants over, grow can be used for other things. And Jan's, um, we're working on, I think, three different um, sheds that we're working on, multi-municipalities. We have memorandums of understanding, great program. Um, I can tell you that if you can get to your municipalities, uh, Jan's team is, is really good at when they review all the, the defects and everything, making suggestions on how to stretch the, the, the dollars of, of the grow funding. And while maybe something isn't eligible, what they thought was eligible, I've been on calls where they've actually focused on another area so that the monies can be used. And think about it, it's all big pie. More you can get to help from the outside, your monies go further. So Jan's, Jan's team is, is great at, at coming uh, to these meetings with innovative ideas uh, as to how we can stretch it out. So uh, we are working, we have a lot more work to do. I know Three Rivers is um, has a lot of things that we can do. We just have to get down and start doing it. Hey, Bella, yeah, well, thank you for your presentation um, Moving on. If we could, the, uh, any discussion around the advisory committee? Uh, reports from members of activities in their bases? Anybody have anything they want to add? Um, I'll start off with the Chartiers. Um, as you guys know, our, our, our team you know, um, has divided up the municipalities within the basin. Uh, we reached out to all our municipalities, um, got about a 50% response, um, got a response to add some people to our emails. Uh, what we're going to be doing is sending them the approved minutes after they're approved each month, obviously setting out presentations, reached out to them. If you didn't guess, I asked about who wanted to ask Dave Mont's questions and everybody jumped on that bandwagon, obviously. <laughs> um, so um, we're just finding it, you know, to be a good communication tool. The three of us um, will reach out um, each month, um, try and get things back. Um, just started with them, so I don't really have a lot of projects to update yet. Um, but more just opening the communication and letting them know we're here for them with Alcasan. Um, obviously pushing about signing the regionalization agreements, pushing them about, you know, they've got federal funding coming in. And then obviously we'll write up a little bit about Three Rivers, um, good stuff that we'll add to the other things. So that's the, uh, if my other teammates are on, I think they might be, if they want to add anything. I thought I saw Ken, uh, the mayor, I don't know if he wants to add anything. Um, um, but and Mark Ruth Ann, here, I think. Ruth Ann, I have nothing to add to, to, to uh, I'll just echo all the things you've said. Thank you. Okay, terrific. So Tim, that's the Chartiers Basin Report. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wants to add anything? Patty DeMarco here. Um, we're having a meeting um, tomorrow at 1030 uh, for our basin in uh, Glen Engineering is going to be updating on the status of the repairs to our major trunk lines. And um, I think we have pretty much everybody coming to that. All those big maps have been posted in the borough building <laughs> and people have been, you know, we don't have a lot of people marching in and out like we usually do because of the COVID, but um, I know that it is in the, um, in, on the wall. So people can look at it when they come through. I'll let you know after that meeting, how it goes with everybody in terms of where we all stand. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Tim, just real quickly, um, I get, I, I guess Ross, I, I look at it as Ross is kind of on autopilot. <laughs> um, I just, we, we approved last night, we approved our transfer agreement with uh, you guys in Aetna, um, that, that transfer agreement. Um, yep. it, these things come up, our engineer, you know, mm -hmm. it, there's no questions. I mean, you know, the boards, you know, fortunately, even some of the younger people are educated. I, I guess I, I guess it'd be nice. I know there's, you know, other municipalities uh, that can't necessarily go on that autopilot, but um, we're more or less on autopilot with this. Um, and it was a quick, um, you know, motion, second, questions, none, approved. Um, so the agreement's coming coming from us, or the signature's coming from me soon. Great. And the, uh, 
the Ross Shaler is the Shaler's in the same position where we've got it on the agenda for approval. There are no questions. Um, all of the, the repairs have been made. We just have to document those repairs to the trunk main. And we're prepared to make that transfer as well. It helps that my solicitor's wife is pushing this thing for Alcasan, so uh, I don't really have a choice, but we will get this thing resolved as well in our base. Yeah, that's the same for Etna. We we took care of the trunk line repairs early on. We're done to the individual communities and Aetna does have some left, but it's such a small, I'm just having trouble getting a contract, but might've worked that out with Toledo, Tim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody else on their bases? Uh, Max, do you have anything for the go to the order? No, none at this time. Uh, those are great to hear those reports on the, the transfer agreement. Uh, we'll pass it on to, to Laura as well. And, and as Jan already said, I mean, we've been churning out the, the revised uh, transfer agreements as quickly as we get the list from AECOM. Uh, that has been your main point of contact uh, on the defect reports, on the status, on who's ready to go. Uh, so it is, it is moving uh, and we appreciate all the work that was done by Three Rivers Wet Weather and the solicitors group to, to scrub these agreements so that uh, Mr. DeMarco can have a quick uh, uh, <laughs> up vote and not uh, go into months and months of, of redlining back and forth. Great. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 18th. Um, and that is election day. I'm sorry. Tim, you busy. Somebody yeah. try to reach you. <laughs> You're busy. I've got, three, I've got three phones in here and they're all ringing. They're all golf um, tea times. Yeah. Right, <laughs> the, uh, it's scheduled for May 18th and that's primary election day and this is a municipal election year. So is there a desire to change the date of the meeting? I vote by, I don't, I'm not up and I vote by mail. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be helpful because I know a lot of us are going to be at the polls. I certainly won't be at a meeting that day. Um, okay. have, is, yeah, I'll probably be out and about myself. Okay. Yeah, I think you're welcome to stay home, Dan. You're welcome to stay home. <laughs> so May 18th is a, a Tuesday again. Yeah. Is there any objection to moving it to Wednesday or Thursday of that same week? Thursday. Thursday would be better. Wednesday's council meeting. Okay, Thursday. Is that okay with everybody? Well, yeah, I, have other, I have a standing board. meeting. I have other meetings on Thursday that week. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I can make that day either, but I'll, I'll try. It'll be quieter if I'm not here. Yeah, I was just going to say, if, if Tuesday is a day that works for everyone, can't we just do Tuesday the following week? Yes, the 25th. I was thinking the same thing, Ruth Ann. Okay, that, would be good. that would be excellent. That's that good. Would the 25th. I can do that. If that's okay with everybody, let's go ahead and do that. So the next meeting will be May 25th. I did want to mention also, um, is Elka Sand the offices, are you still closed? I mean, at some point in time, it would be nice to get the uh, group back together for face-to-face. -to -face. Yeah. I don't know what Elka Sand's current position is regarding meetings. I'm in the boardroom. I've got plenty of space. Okay. <laughs> Have you, has your board returned to uh, no. in-person meetings? We will, we'll work it out. Okay. If we could take a look forward, that would be nice if we could get back together sometime. This yeah, we, we, last night was uh, our first night back in over a year. Uh, we, yeah. we were spaced out in our, uh, at our uh, meeting room at the municipal building. We never closed. We, we kept meeting. Did you? Yeah, we just, we spaced it a little bit. But then That's we come to a meeting. Anyway, so it out. One thing I will say, the last time we were at Alka Sand for a meeting, it was very crowded. So... Yeah. That's just my take on it. Good. And I'd like to maybe just request that, that maybe we send out a, 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 a little survey as to those people who would want to start to meet in person and those who prefer Zoom. Everyone has a different opinion and different situation. And it might be a half and half. I think that's some people idea. still attend by Zoom and some come in person, which is perfectly fine. Um, I just, you know, before we just set one way or the other in fairness to everybody may be asked, that's all. Okay. And Arlette, are you able to accommodate I know you, you're well set up in the conference room, but are you able to meet at where we, the other room we met in? Do you have uh, audio visual there that can accommodate us? If I divert some of the Three Rivers money, I'm sure I'll be able to work well, it that's up. That's okay, I don't have a problem. <laughs> with it. 
You know, maybe when you do the survey, if you could inquire if people have been vaccinated, because once we've all been vaccinated, it would be a little less risky to get together. Sure. That might be a good criterion. I think that's a good idea. Jeannie, are you able to uh, have do that for us? Yeah, Arlette and I will figure out what the survey should ask. Okay, great. Um, yeah. I got the J&J. &J. I'm waiting to get a, a blood clot. Well, you know, I, I took the risk with the J. You're not a woman, so first off, never know. I took the risk with the J and J too, and I, I sent my wife in to get the J and J. So I'll let you know how that works. Out. Uh, anything else? Any new business? Anyone want to bring? Up I I just had a question about the minutes. As you can tell, we are doing pretty much verbatim minutes, mm -hmm. uh, but we also provide you with the video. Um, would you prefer to have a uh, synopsis of the discussions and then you could refer to the video or do you want the usual 10 to 12 pages? Of no. I say the shorter the minutes, the better um, oh, motions and go to the re recording if you want to hear it. Um, I don't know if no, Max is still here. Most solicitors always said to us, uh, shorter is better. The shorter is better. better. Yeah, I need 10 to 12 pages. I agree, shorter is better. Yeah, I, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, uh, I want to thank Jeannie for putting together a very informative uh, agenda. This was yeah. a very good meeting. Thank you. And we have no public comment today. Okay, no public comment. Okay, no very public. good. Without uh, any objection, then we are adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Have a wonderful Thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone.